Welcome to Credit Matters. I'm Mike Skirbo, Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Group. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, telecom industry in Latin America. I'm joined by, by Marcela Duenas, who's an Associate Director in our Mexico City office. Thanks for joining. Hi. Let's first talk about uh, the, how companies have performed, telecom companies have performed in Latin America. Well, we have seen a strength in business profiles of the largest players in the industry through acquisitions in complementary businesses and territories. Additionally, there is a young, large base, base population that are demanding Internet access and data contact through wireless devices that have allowed this company revenue growth, free cash flow generation, and some stability. Conversely, for the smaller companies, it's, the story has been quite different. We've seen their business profiles are still weak or vulnerable because they lack economies of scales, and their equity base is very small to cope with the largest investments that are needed in this industry. And also, they have lesser access to the capital markets to refinance their debt with better terms and conditions. Okay, let's get a bit more specific. How about um, the individual business lines? Well, what are our expectations there? Well, we have seen declining average revenue producer or ARPUs in the traditional services. However, uh, the bundling of packages have allowed the carriers to have higher ARPUs. Uh, in the fixed life segment, we have seen them suffering by line line disconnections, lower volumes, and pricing pressures. So we expect access line losses to remain in the low single digits mainly because of wireless substitution. So conversely, we will expect the wireless to perform strongly across the region. And revenues are going to be boosted by data usage. And despite higher penetration rates in the region, we expect subscriber base to continue growing. But now, like, the challenges for these sectors will be to increase the minutes of use and the postpaid base, which has higher ARPUs. In the broadband and pay TV sphere, we, the penetration rates are very low, so we expect growth, and also this growth will derive uh, high capital expenditures in order for carriers to build uh, networks to serve this population. How about uh, consolidation? What, what, what are our expectations there? We saw very dynamic M&A activity during last year and this year, which derived a lot of uh, rating changes. Some examples of this M&A activity were uh, American Mobile's uh, merger of its wireline and wireless operations in order to get some synergies and to uh, have uh, lower capital expenditures. That uh, made its largest competitor, Telefonica, to acquire the remaining stake in Vivo, that is the largest operator in Brazil. We also saw during this year the largest broadcaster in Mexico, Televisa, acquire a wireline company in order to further participate in the telecom industry. So we expect M&A activity to continue uh, during the next coming years as companies are trying to be more efficient and more competitive. How about relative to um, evolution? Of, of the regulatory environment in, in the key markets in Latin America? Well, we have seen regulation has become more stringent in the Mexican market. Uh, the regulator has just stepped in in order to decrease um, determination rates. So we don't foresee any big impact for the largest players. However, for the smaller players in the industry in the uh, short term, uh, they will increase its profitability and its competitiveness. And on April, the regulator established a $1 billion fine for American Mobile. The company has already appealed this resolution, but we'll, we'll monitor uh, the results for this. In Brazil, uh, I think the regulator will not like to disrupt the market, so we'll just expect uh, a slight decrease in termination rates uh, for the following couple of years. Okay, well, one, one last quick question. Maybe pull all this together. Uh, how does this, uh, what, what is our view on credit quality uh, overall in, in, for Latin America telecom companies? Well, 60% of the portfolio is investment grade, 
and most of the companies are carrying a stable outlook, so we don't foresee any any big changes in credit quality in the near future. However, the, the drivers for future credit, credit quality changes could be M&A, uh, financial policy, and the evolving regulatory environment. Well, great. Appreciate you joining. Thank you. We'll see you again next time.